Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, out to Fairview Park Hospital. We're here with Dr. Travan Jasper, brother of Dr. Jasper, we you've seen on many times before, but so good to have you. Thank so you. you guys work as a team. You always have, huh? Pretty much, yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so you service people out at Fairview Park Hospital. You assist them in many ways here in the emergency room. So we wanted to come to you, ladies and gentlemen, today and talk just a little bit, doctor, about uh, back to school time. You know, it's approaching so fast. People are going to be hurrying around. They're going to be getting supplies. And uh, there's some things that you wanted to point out to them that need to be aware of uh, with back to school with so many kids coming together all at once. Absolutely. Um, there are a few things that are really important for your, your younger kids. Um, in particular, um, hand washing is very, very important. Um, we see that a lot of the illnesses are spread because of poor hand washing and hygiene. The biggest thing is, is people do not wash their hands correctly. And what I mean by that is the first thing is time. You need to wash your hands really for at least 20 seconds. And what that is, there's a couple steps to how you do your hand washing. You wet your hands, then get your soap and water and lather for about 20 seconds. And that's rubbing every side of your hand, not just the palms. You gotta do the tops, in between the fingers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I do to do that, to make sure I'm doing the correct time, is I sing a song. Uh, it works really well for me. My patients always, I mean, they get a kick out of it because maybe I'm not the greatest singer, <laughs> but I sing a song. And so what I recommend to the kids, the younger kids, is do your alphabets. So if you go through your alphabet, and however way you like to do it, sing it, mm -hmm. or just say it inside your, even if it's in your mind, mm -hmm. you'll get probably that 20 seconds of, of lathering and, and rubbing your hands. Then after that, you rinse them well, dry them well. But remember, the other thing is dry your hands, then take whatever towel, clean towel, or napkins you're using to dry your hands, mm -hmm. use that to turn off the water. So it defeats the purpose if you wash your hands and do that great job, and then you take your wet hands and touch the faucet and contaminate them. That you just so, turned off. Exactly. So mm -hmm. dry them off, mm -hmm. then take whatever you use to dry it mm -hmm. and turn off the water. So that works great. Other thing is that a lot of people have questions about hand sanitizers. Now, I'm an old school guy. I believe in just a good old fashioned soap and water. But hand sanitizers in most parts have been shown to be effective. Uh -huh. But you have the same problem with hand sanitizers that you can have with soap and water where people do not get the top of their hands. They just slap it on their palms and kind of walk away. Mm -hmm. So even with the sanitizers, you have to do the entire hands in between your fingers, stuff like that. So. Yeah. Very important. All right. So, and, and along with that, with back to school, you'll get these back to school supplies. And one of the items on there for the kids to bring is going to be hand sanitizer. They're always going to bring that, but you have to use it That's properly. right. Absolutely. It's very important. And then you say, sing a song. I thought you were going to break out and sing that <laughs> song for us here. But, but you sing a song and make sure at least 20 seconds you're, you're washing your hands. Now, who knew or did you, ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't start to practice it where you wet your hands first? and then apply the soap. That way it distributes right. a little That's bit better, right? right? Absolutely. All right. Um, so other thing that we're, since we're talking about back to school and, and younger kids, mm -hmm. this is really important because we get in the U.S. millions of outbreaks or infestations yearly. That's lice. And we're talking about head lice. Yeah. Really important because people often think that you get head lice just because of poor hygiene, but that is absolutely false anybody can get head lice mm -hmm. and un unfortunately if a kid gets it in your family the parents and everyone else in the household are at risk mm -hmm. so often no one can figure out if their kid or if they have head lice versus dandruff those are the two things that mimic each other because they have similar symptoms okay so with dandruff you get a little bit of itching and tingling with head lice you get a little itching and tingling so the biggest difference though is dandruff you can just flake off easy head lice you can because it's it sticks to the hair follicles mm -hmm. really tightly yeah. there are three phases of the actual louse louse is for a singular l-o-u-s-e mm -hmm. lice is for two or more all right and they're like three stages that the life of, of a lice or louse goes through all right it goes through it's a net or an egg mm -hmm. and that's usually how you can diagnose head lice infestations because the net sticks real strong on the hair follicle okay and it'll look almost it it's really small 
So it's it, you almost think it's like a little seed or something. It's really tiny. But that stage can last for seven days. That's actually before it hatches into a baby louse, also known as a nymph. So it's the same as the adult louse, but smaller. And so that takes seven days about from that baby to become an adult. But it only can become an adult by feeding, and they feed on blood. I hate use that term, but they feed on human that's blood. That's what's going on. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So that's why you get those symptoms. Mm -hmm. But it's really important because people, they'll wonder, if I go and sit in a sofa or, or something after someone else, yeah. will I get the lice? Mm -hmm. You can. Very important. So big, big no-nos. Do not share brushes or combs. Do not share hats and, or other clothing that can be contaminated. Yeah. And you know kids. Oh, yeah. Kids share everything. Here, put oh, on my yeah, hat. That's right. I mean, that's that's a standard at, at, at elementary school that I remember. Mm -hmm. So do not use someone else's hat. Do not use someone else's comb or brush. And make sure you check. Now, so what's important is if your kid starts complaining of symptoms of itching and, and the little tingling on their scalp, to check. And you really want to check behind the ears and at the neck hairline because okay. that's where they primarily live. And you would look for those little nets that on the base of the hair follicle. And you'll know because they don't come off easily. You just can't, can't just flick, flick them, right them off, off like okay. dandruff. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, if you see lice crawling around, that, that's a no-brainer. Yeah. But there, the good thing is there's treatment. There are lots of over-the-counter medications that work. Mm -hmm. And if those medications do not work, then obviously you can go to your pediatrician or your local physician and get prescribed medications. Mm -hmm. But there's tons of medications that work. Biggest thing is to avoid spreading it. So one good thing to know, though, is that they only can live about two days out off not being on a person's head. So okay. if, if somehow you were somewhere and two days later you go there, unlikely that so you So you could just spread. abandon the home for two days. You could vacate <laughs> the premises. Right. And come back after two days. And then you, you that pretty safe but the best thing to do oh, is no. to clean everything yeah clean so everything in hot water so mm -hmm. if you take your your clothing a kid's clothing yeah. make sure you wash it in on your hot cycle and then put it in a dryer on high heat that works now when it comes to brushes and combs this is a little different you can there's a lot of different things you can do but clean the brush and the comb mm -hmm. um, you can use Lysol you can use soap and water um, usually you can soak them but guess this trick, put it in the freezer for two days. So I guess the lice do not like extreme heat and they clearly do not like extreme freeze, cold. extreme mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of ways to, to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But once you get it, you have to keep doing surveillance. You have to check every few days and make sure your treatment's working. Mm -hmm. And then at least weekly or so until everything is gone. Now you say seven days before they actually mature to the, the next yeah. level. Do you have seven days to get rid of them? Actually. Do, do you have that period that so, you can? So what happens is they go from being that little larva stage, takes about seven days to hatch, mm -hmm. become a baby louse, mm -hmm. and then another seven days to be an adult. Now here's the kicker, though. you got to be careful. You can't think, I'll just wait it out because they can live for up to 30 days. Okay. So the adult can live for up to 30 days. You can't just say, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna live it out. Mm -hmm. um, it takes two, <laughs> just like an adult, it takes two. It takes two lice or louse to mate, to reproduce. Now, the reason I tell you that is because a lot of people think that there's another option. They'll say, well, I'll just cut all my hair off. I'll just cut all of my hair off and, and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. Now. It might work because they need that hair shaft follicle to be able to reproduce and stuff. Okay. But guess what? Everybody can't have a bald head. Doesn't work for most people. Most kids aren't going to say, yeah, look, I have a bald head because of et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So the biggest thing, though, do not share hats, mm -hmm. scarves, mm -hmm. even coats in the wintertime, and definitely not brushes and combs then we can avoid it because it, it, it is a nuisance. As you heard me say, you have to do surveillance. And that can take up to three weeks sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one wants it. So take the precautions. It's just great advice from Fairview Park Hospital. Dr. Jasper, thanks for sharing with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it.